page in. So when the item is selected, we're going to push it in and I'm just going to set fix that using statement. And then once it's in, it's going to uh, it's going to navigate to the details page. And right now our details page is empty, but we will we will fix that soon. And then back into our main page, we need to set uh, set up the navigation uh, into our service locator. So we're going to go in here and right here we're going to set simple IOC and we're going to register it. And the reason we have to do it in here is because our navigation page actually has a navigation uh, object within it. So that's why we have to set it from, from in here, and this will be a navigation, uh, a navigation object specific to every platform uh, that we're going to set into our service locator, which will then be injected into our main view model. Great. Okay, so from here, we're going to grab this. This is our list code and we're going to set it in here. So this is our, when an item is selected, we want to run some code. And essentially what we're running here is the view model heritage property item selected command. So that's the one we recently selected or created and we're passing in the selected item. So once the selected item is passed in, it's going to go in here. It's going to set our selected item within our, uh, our view model, our details view model. And then we're going to push the details into there. So now on the details page, we're going to implement this with, uh, we're just going to change this. To actually set it, set everything up. I'm going to collapse this. So you notice we have a view model, but of type details view model. And we go into the app locator and we grab all that. Uh, we grab that out. And then we have a helper method to create labels for us, which set binding or set the text for a label that we want to add, and then we, we just return it. And then in our constructor, we do something. So, so this is just a content page. So we set our, our binding context to the view model. We set some bindings. So the selected item, which we have a property in our view model called selected item. We grab the name for the title. Uh, we do a stack layout, and then we just add uh, we add a couple labels in there. We add the ID, the latitude, the longitude, and we add a web view, and we set the content. So one thing I want to point out here is this. So device.onPlatform is specific to Xamarin Forms, and what it allows you to do, it's a utility class to basically allow you to run different code depending on which platform you're on within your PCL. So here, on iOS and Android, we could set the title at the top to uh, the name of the selected item. But on Windows Phone, we don't have a title page at the top. So we, what we have to do is we just set another label. We create another label called name, and then we, uh, we set that name. So this will only happen on the Windows Phone platform. It won't happen on iOS and Android, uh, and we, we just set the navigation title bar at the top. Okay, so this is kind of like a conditional compile, but this is something that Xamarin.Forms grants us so that we can do some platform-specific type activities exactly. in our code. Exactly. So with the device that on platform, you know, you may want to render things in a different color on a different platform. On you know, on Windows, you may want to go one color. On iOS, you may want to go a different color. So this is how you're going to be doing that, or you want to set the fonts bigger or smaller or something like that. So this is where you're going to be setting all that stuff up. Uh, is by using device that on platform. All right. All right. So now, let's go in. Is this ready to run yet? I think so. So, which one you want to run it on? Let's let's do Windows Phone since it's already set up and ready right. to go. So we'll do that, and we'll run. All right. So we we'll click on one click to get the one. details. There's details, and you see we have our name, uh, Dundas Street West. We'll select back. So that's working good, as expected. All right. Let's take a look at the iOS. So we're going to set that as startup. We're going to change this to iPhone. 
and we're going to because this will this will create that next me or that back menu exactly up at the top of the screen exactly and that's where that's where you know I, I think Xamarin Forms is is pretty powerful because uh, it doesn't try to do a build once run everywhere type thing um, the way Java used to do it you know where all the controls look the same no matter on what platform you were on uh, here it's doing um, switch over here it's actually rendering the native controls for the platform. Okay, so, so. it's asking us, us permission yep. uh, to use our location. Yeah, so that's a good thing. So there's our, oh, I'm go the actual device. So there's our thing, and there's, you see your back button. You got your title bar at the top, uh, which is a name, and you notice we don't have a name label uh, because we're not running that on iOS. And we get all that great functionality back and forth. Great. And, uh, and so let's, let's take one last look at the uh, Android sure. version. And so, th so this is pretty cool. We've, we've done all of our code in a PCL for these, yeah. these two views, but uh, you know, we've, we've done it all in one place, but we've got each one, each platform getting the location uh, specific to the device of the location. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's the, that's the power of it. Uh, so here we got it on Android. Uh, so again, we got our list. I'm going to scroll, and there we have our back button. So here you, can, you notice that we it actually adds a back button at the top, but we even have our hardware back button that still works. And we don't have the name label because we could set the name in the navigation bar. Great. So All right, so we want to take a look at the map though, right? Because that's going to be, that's going to render a little bit differently from one to the next. Yes, it will. So mapping is, um, is a little bit different. So with the basic implementation of maps, uh, you could essentially, you know, show a map and you can, um, you could add pins to the map. So right now I found it to be a lim little bit limiting, uh, but Xamarin Forms is extensible. You could extend it with custom renderers. Uh, so, and that's what we've done here. So, Custom renderers works similar to dependency injection. So dependency injection right here, here's an example for the GPS as we went through already. But with custom renders and, and Xamarin Forms, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add an assembly attribute and you're gonna export the renderer, type of map renderer too. And here you see is a map renderer uh, inheriting from map. So I called it map renderer to inheriting from map. And then we have our uh, Android and Windows and iOS implementation that's going to happen, but you use it. You use a map render too, the same as you you would use maps. So you just create a new object and then you uh, you start using that. So Xamarin.Forms has a map that I can use, but using this custom renderer allows me to do a map specific to each platform. Uh, yes. So uh, basically, what what Xamarin Forms uh, didn't allow you with maps was to uh, know when the push pin was clicked. So when the info box come, came up, we wanted to navigate to uh, the details page. We couldn't do that with the current implementation of Xamarin Forms, but we extended it by using custom renderers for maps. Right. Uh, now, one of the things that we had to do is we had to use messaging. So to talk between the custom renderer and the, uh, the PCL, we had to do messaging to send messages to the custom renderer, uh, depending on which platform we were on, and to notify the PCL that the info box was clicked. So Xamarin Forms comes with built-in messaging uh, into the platform or into the, uh, to the API, and that's what we leverage to communicate back and forth. All right, well, let's take a look at it. All right, so let me switch back in. And I'm just going to close all these off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have to add a NuGet package for the solution. And we're going to do Xamarin, we're going to do Xamarin Forms Maps. And we're just going to install this right here. And we're going to install it on all of them, all the platforms. All right, so that's adding a reference to the Xamarin.Forms to all of our projects. Yes. And giving us the extra code we need to do the mapping. Exactly, and then you'll notice here that uh, it's actually downloading some things from the Android, uh, for Android support for mapping. Uh, so it's just gonna download that. 
And it's similar and similar to what we did when we developed the native uh, without Xamarin forms, right? The native apps using uh, just Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android uh, with Android, how it has to download the Google Play services. Okay. So that's what it's doing here automatically for us. Now, is this limited to, limited to map controls? Are there other renderers, other controls that having these custom renderers would be helpful for? Uh, you could do a custom renderer for pretty much anything uh, within there. So you could, uh, you know, if you want to extend the button control, uh, you could do a custom render for that if, you, if need be. Okay, great. All right, so back in here, it looks like everything is, uh, is downloaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our main page. And we're going to replace our constructor right here. So our constructor is a little bit different. So we're going to have a map here. So I'm going to set the reference here. So you can see a map type. So here we're just creating the standard base map. We haven't created our custom renderer yet. And everything else is pretty much the same. So we're going to call, uh, we're going to have a, a method here, load properties on map. And that's just going to go in and it's going to load all the properties. Uh, and we're going to move to a region on the first pin. So that's another thing you, could, you couldn't do relatively easily is uh, zoom in on a region of pins uh, the way we did previously. And we'll solve that with the custom renders. And then when the main property changes, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to the property change of heritage properties, and then we're going to load it. So because our heritage properties is going to load in our, uh, in, our in our view model, and then it's going to notify us here that it's been changed. So we're going to manually do that, and we're going to set this to Windows Phone. And I'm going to run this. So down here, you'll see how uh, it's added, but it's blank right now. So the reason for that is you need to initialize uh, xamarinforms.maps. So you also notice that we added it to the stack panel. So we did the list and the map. So it's automatically added there. So when you're using xamarinforms.map, one uh, you know, common mistake is to uh, not initialize anything and no, form, no, no maps will be shown. So here we're going to initialize the map. So dot forms map dot init. And we're going to have to do these for all the platforms. Wrong one. OK, so, so what is this init function doing? So this basically initializes the, uh, the Xamarin forms uh, API and SDK, uh, so you can actually use the maps uh, within your application. Okay. So it's calling platform-specific implementations, and that's why you have to call it from uh, all the different platforms here. Okay. So that's making determination whether we're using Google Maps or uh, uh, MapKit or whatever maps are. Uh, exactly, or the Bing Maps okay. on uh, on Windows Phone. So here I'm implementing for Android. Android, you see, you have to pass it in the current activity and the bundle. So we'll save all that. And then from there, we will run it again. All right, so we're, we're looking at the windows. Yeah, looking at windows. And now you see we have a maps are loading, push pins are there, and this is just a token that we have to set, but we won't worry about that because we can still use it. Um, but you notice that we can't we, we can't push on push. We don't know when a push pin is clicked. Right. So we'll go in, and what we want to add first is we want to add our toolbar. So our toolbar is going to be added into our main page. So our main page, I'm going to again change this to change our constructor. And it's going to add a few uh, member variables. It's going to add a button list and a button map. And then inside, it's going to create, initialize those buttons. And they're going to be toolbar buttons. 
So toolbar buttons are going to go into the uh, top navigation bar, similar to what we had in the past, uh, in the previous modules. And then it's going to also add it to the, uh, to the Windows fold to the navigation bar at the bottom. So the click handlers are right here. So you see there, uh, there are just actions that we run, or delegates, and then uh, we set we, we just swap things, swap in and out similar to what we had before. And we remove the button depending on which button is clicked at the time. We remove or add a button. So, right, we, so we're creating those toolbar items, again, platform specific, where they would normally show up, either at the top or down at the bottom on a Windows phone. Exactly, exactly. So uh, we do need to add some images. So to show them in the buttons, so we're going to do Android, we're going to add resources. All right. Uh, and those are just the icon buttons, so I'm going to do the same for iOS. Okay, so adding icons to, to give it that nice look and feel. Exactly. Uh, so we know. To. So we know we're actually clicking. So here, I mean, they're just simple uh, list icon and a map icon. Okay. And one of the things with Windows is you have to set that in the root so instead of in resources or assets. You have to set it in the root. It's just one of the requirements. At this point, and then 